if we find that all these items are okay in a good state and the laptop still off the laptop motherboard seems to be failed so how we can check the laptop motherboard hi we go into a troubleshooting a failed laptop does not want to turn it on so this is the path that we will follow to troubleshoot this laptop as you see here we have the plug with 230 volt and 60 hertz or 115 volt and 50 hertz this is two terminals of the power cable and here we have the adapter this is the 19 volt dc adapter plug and this is the laptop jack so this is another image for the laptop jack connected to the motherboard and this is the power button okay so where your laptop won't turn on the problem can be in one of these items maybe the plug maybe the cable the power cable the laptop adapter maybe the jack the laptop jack or maybe in the power button if you find that all these items when you do your troubleshoot and you find that all these items are okay so the problem is in your laptop itself so here we have the troubleshooting tree that we will study so here we have the laptop so this is the power button so when we press the power button we have two states the laptop turned on or the laptop still off if the laptop is off we should check the adapter and the power cable if we replace the adapter plus the power cable and the laptop goes on then problem is in the adapter or the power cable but if we replace these two items and the laptop still off then the problem is in the power source we should fix it and we will solve the problem but if we find that the power source is okay so we find 230 volts or 115 volts but the laptop still off so the problem is in the laptop itself so we should check in the first time the power jack maybe the power jack is failed maybe there is a crack in the power jack or a dry in it you should check the solder the power jack parts if its parts is connected correctly to the motherboard or not so if you find that the power jack is okay so in the second time you should check the power button maybe there, there is a problem in the power button if the power jack is okay and the power button is okay so the laptop motherboard is failed you can replace the laptop motherboard and you will solve the problem but if we find that all these items are okay in a good state and the laptop still off the laptop motherboard seems to be failed so how we can check the laptop motherboard so the first thing that we should check is the power jack as you see so this is the power jack okay so we should first check the power jack because the power jack is the input of the power to the motherboard okay so this is the first item that is connected to outside world okay so we should first and we have to first check the power jack how can we check the power jack i show you how so using the multimeter so put the multimeter to this voltage option okay and then using the terminals or the probe of the multimeter goes to the back of the motherboard and locate the pins of the power jack as you see so 
we have here three pins okay so this pin and this is the same okay so this is ground okay this is low pins and this is the high pin okay so you should check first that these pins is connected correctly to the motherboard okay you, sh you should check that there is no dry or crack or something like that confirm that the pins are connected and soldered correctly to the motherboard and using the multimeter you have to check the 19 volt so you have to put the black probe in the ground terminal of the power jack and put the read probe of the multimeter to the high pin of the power jack and then you should measure the 19 volt or 18 volt in accordance with the type of the adapter okay so if you find a voltage between these two terminals that means the power jack is in good state okay so the problem is not with the power jack we should go and check another item so if we find that the power jack is good we should check the power button maybe there is a problem the power is get into the motherboard but maybe there is a problem with the power button we should check the power button so how can we check the power button show you how so as you see this is the power button okay so if you disassemble the computer or the laptop you will find the power button and this is the power buzzer pins actually the power button have four pins so two low pins and two high pins okay so and this is the schematic the power button schematic as you see here so if you check using the multimeter the two pins of the power button you have to find 3.3 volt okay without switching on the computer you should find 3.3 volts between the terminals of the power button as you see this is the schematic of the power button as you see so this is the power button okay this is the high terminal this and this is the low terminal that is connected to the ground so this terminal so when you you check the power button using the multimeter you will find here 3.3 volts okay and if you press the power button this 3.3 volt should be zero volt why because it will goes through this button to the ground so to check if the power button is good or not you should first measure 3.3 volts and when you press it this 3.3 volt should disappear and goes to zero okay so if you check the power button and you find it okay so the problem is not in the power button is not in the power jack the problem is in the motherboard itself so we have here the troubleshooting tree as you see we have the laptop we have the power jack so if we we'll check the power jack and we find that the power jack is bad we can just replace it and we will solve the problem but if the power jack is good so we should check the power switch okay so if we check the power switch and we find 3.3 volts then the problem is not with the power switch the problem is the motherboard so the motherboard failed we should replace the motherboard but if we check the power switch and we find zero volts that means the problem maybe is in the 3.3 volt motherboard circuit we should check the 3.3 volt motherboard circuit okay if we check the 3.3 volt motherboard circuit and we find it bad then we should replace the motherboard so in the next class i'm going to show you how to check the 3.3 volt motherboard circuit using a schematic in order to know what can be the cause of the failure behind the absence of 3.3 volt in the power switch so let's get started 
so as you see here this is 3.3 volts and 5 volts always circuit diagram so as you see here this is the 3.3 volts here we get the 3.3 volt as you see here and this is the ic that is responsible for this 3.3 volt as you see here so this is the ic the pu2 as you see this is the maximum or max 8778 so this ic is responsible for generating 3.3 volts okay and also here we have two mosfets okay that works with ic and here we have a coil as you see pl7 we have some resistor here and this is a pf capacitor and here we have a chemical capacitor this capacitor is a filtering capacitor okay so how can we get this 3.3 volts always i show you how so as you see here so in the beginning of the circuit we have here the power source as you see the power source here we have 19 volts so this point is connected directly to the power jack of the motherboard so here we have the 19 volts okay and here we have a coil as you see coil so here we get here the 19 volts also we have here the dc power source as you see so this 19 volts will pass through this pf capacitor so this is a filtering capacitor and will go directly and pass through this resistor and then go to to this ic as you see we have here the vn so the input voltage okay this is the 19 volt vn voltage okay so the 19 volt will go here to do to this pin pin number six of the ic and also will go directly to the drain of this mosfet as you see this is drain so using the multimeter you can measure and check whether this 19 volt is present or not the first thing you have to do when you troubleshoot the 3.3 volts is to check if the 19 volt exists here and also in the drain of this MOSFET as you see the PQ7 this is just an example but the working principle is the same you can do the same with any schematic and any laptop okay so the first thing is to check the 19 volt in the VN in this pin P number 6 for this IC the max 8778 and also in the first MOSFET so if you find 19 volt in pin number 6 of this IC and you find also the 19 volt in the drain of this MOSFET and you check all these components this resistor this capacitor and also this capacitor and this coil you can check if this coil is okay or not using the multimeter and the buzzer option you can check this coil so when you when you put the red probe here of the multimeter and the black probe here and you hear a sound or a buzzer that means this coil is okay so if you check all these components so this capacitor resistor and the coil and also these mosfets are okay and you have the 19 volt here and the 19 volt here in the pin number six and the 3.3 volt still absent that means maybe you have a problem with this ic okay you can confirm by going and checking the plus 5 volt why because this ic is responsible for generating 3.3 volt always and plus 5 volt always okay so if you find the 3.3 volts is absent you can go and check plus 5 volt if you find also the plus 5 volt is absent that means the ic can be failed but if you find here plus 5 volts exists and 3.3 volt absent maybe you have just a problem in one component in this in the 3.3 volt part maybe a resistor maybe a capacitor okay maybe this coil is is failed you should just check this part so remember if you have all these components are okay and you don't find the 3.3 volt maybe the problem 
is the IC itself. Okay, I want to add that this IC and this thermosphere is the main component that is responsible for generating 3.3 volt because this IC controls these two MOSFETs as you see so this is gate okay so we have the gate of MOSFETs as you see so here in the pin 26 you have upper gate okay and here in the pin uh, 23 we have the low gate so this IC controls this thermosphere in order to generate this 3.3 volt always so if you find that this MOSFET is bad you can change it and you will solve the problem if you change this IC and the problem persists you have to change the whole motherboard and you will solve the problem so by checking the 3.3 volt motherboard circuit if you find a failed component you can just replace it by another serviceable one and solve the problem but if you find that the the 3.3 volt always is complex to solve you can just make tank easier and replace the whole motherboards